So then, um, <clears throat> just a few considerations here on this on this Good Friday, <clears throat> and um, in this time of the our Lord is hanging on the cross, <clears throat> and a few considerations here on this final stage <clears throat> before the. Uh, crucifixion of our Lord, the final judgment against Christ. So, in the name of the Father and the Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. Saint Basil tells us that <clears throat> the Jews, the bad guys, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all the authorities, the authorities were ready to crucify Christ from the very beginning. When they first saw him in the year 30 AD, they were ready to put him to death. They were ready to end his days. But they were not able to do it. They were not able to do it because the people were not yet ready. They did not yet have the moral fiber to crucify Christ. They weren't ready to do it. And also we read in the book of Jeremiah, or rather in Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel, when in chapter 34... Where God complains about the wicked pastors. And he complains about the wicked pastors. That the wicked pastors did not feed the sheep. The wicked pastors drove the sheep away from the field. The wicked pastors shore the, uh, to, in the winter time cut the, uh, the, uh, the, the wool off of the sheep. And left them to freeze. And the wicked pastors did many wicked things. But then in the second part of chapter 34... God turns to the sheep and he says, Oh, I was angry with the wicked pastors. Know that I am also angry with the sheep. And here St. Basil says that it's true that in the condemnation of man, of God, the wicked pastors, the wicked kings, the wicked leaders hold the most serious uh, fault. But they could not achieve their wickedness Unless the people were ready to accept it. They couldn't achieve their wickedness <clears throat> unless the people were themselves also wicked. And there was a statement also of the saints. Several, of the diff several different saints used to say to the priests, to the faithful, You get the pastors that you deserve. You get the, you get the shepherds that you deserve. It was also said in the Old Testament that the wicked kings... Remember that the people begged for a king. They wanted a king so that they could be like all of the other peoples. With a king, with a, with a, head, a material headquarters, with a court, with nobility, etc. They wanted to be like the other kingdoms. Whereas up until the days of Samuel, God was a direct leader of the Jewish people. And he ruled in all things through the prophet. Remember that Moses took care of all the court cases. And Moses waged war. And Moses ruled the religion. Moses ruled all things. And God intended there to be only one ruler over his people. And that this ruler would be both the leader of the religious as well as the leader of the civil part. And what was the first sin of the Jewish people? They decided to divide these two parts. Now why did they decide to divide these two parts? Officially it was so that they could be like unto the rest of kingdoms. But in reality, they wanted to divide these two parts for the same reason. For the same reason that the prodigal son, after he took his father's inheritance, not many days hence, he went off to a far country. When the prodigal son took the inheritance of his father, he stayed for a couple of days. But in fact, when he took the inheritance... He told his father, give me your money, give me my money, give me my inheritance, and I will show you that I can make more money than you made in your days. I can be more responsible with my money than you were. I can do a better job with my money than you were. That was his official reason for taking the money in advance. But the real reason was he wanted to spend himself in sin. And he couldn't do this in the presence of his father. And therefore, not many days hence, he went away to a far country. When he began that journey to the far country, he wasn't going to be perfectly immoral. But the further that he got away from his father, the longer the time, the longer the distance, there came, um, the, the, the call of the world became more powerful. 
and they went to wickedness. This is what has happened in the last 500 years in Christianity. There has gone a separation. The separation that was there in the earlier times. And remember that the, the, the devil first divides and then he conquers. We are Catholics. We were created by God. And we were given by God rulers over us. And these rulers should help us get to the kingdom of heaven. And that is why the Catholic Church, for instance, says there must be a Catholic state. There must be a Catholic city. There must be a Catholic business. There must be a Catholic home. In all of the things in which we find, places in which we find ourselves, there must be Christ. He must rule the kingdom. If someone wants to become president, if someone wants to become king, they should go and kneel in front of the bishop. And they should receive the power of their, of their kingship or the power of their presidency from the hands of the church. And they should always be across from the cathedral. So that if the king or if the president starts to go against the law of God, the bishop walks across the square and excommunicates him. The bishop walks across the square and says, you stick with the law of God. 400 years ago, 500 years ago with Protestantism, there began to be a separation. Catholics began to be involved in this separation. And they were like the Jews who a thousand years before Christ said, we have been with the prophets for a thousand years. But now we want to follow kings. And don't worry, they're going to be Jewish kings. They're going to be kings that worship God. They're not going to be bad kings. And God was angry with the Jews. And he said, I will give them kings. He told Samuel, you give them a king. I will let them have a king. And the king will be the one that shall punish them. The king will be the one that, they sh that shall make them suffer. The king will be the one that leads them away from God, from me. I shall punish them to their kings. For I am the only king of this people. Now 500 years ago, many Catholics began to think, that they didn't need to be under the Pope. That they didn't need to be united so closely to the church. And they began to separate. Just like the Jews did. Between the faithful and the people of the world, outside world and the religious world. Now the official reason is because priests are supposed to be holy men who are supposed to pray. And priests are holy men who are supposed to do spiritual things. And they really shouldn't be touching the things on the outside. But the real reason is we don't want the priests in our homes because eventually our homes are going to be places of pornography. The real reason is we don't want the priests inside of our kingdom because the kingdom is going to be a place of power and greed. And it's going to be a place of spreading the kingdom of Satan. And we don't want the priest in there. The real reason is we're going to change the laws. From laws that obey the Ten Commandments to laws that are contrary to God. And St. Basil says, the kings that do these wicked things, they cannot do them if the faithful are faithful. The kings cannot do these wicked things if the faithful don't allow it. And so, there has been a corruption of the church that has gone on for the last 400 years, leading to Vatican II. And what happened in Vatican II was the final step by which the church then put itself under the king. But the church first, there was a separation of the state and the church. And the state was still going to be good and do its own thing. The church is still going to be good and do its own thing. But the trouble of the true church is that it is the church of God. And what happens eventually, whenever we separate these things, there must be the condemnation of God. Not the condemnation of the church, of the king. And this is what has happened. And the sin of the leaders is found in the people. And the sin of the people is found in the leaders. They can never be separated one from another. That is why Christ says in the Old Testament, God says in the Old Testament, Israel has sinned. Israel has gone away from me. Both the kings of Israel and the people of Israel. So now likewise in the New Testament, Christ can say that the new Israel, the new Israel, which is a holy Roman Catholic church, has gone away from Christ. 
The new Israel does not want his rule anymore. The new Israel does not think about God in the way that it should. The new Israel has become wicked. And this wickedness is deep in our blood. The sinfulness of the kings is inside of us. And the sinfulness of us is manifested by the kings. If Obama was hated as much as he has claimed to be hated, he would have been overthrown. But no one's going to overthrow him. If all these wicked kings and wicked leaders in the world today were as hated as many claim that they are hated, things would be different, but they're not. Because in our hearts, we recognize that we like, we like the sinful world in which we live. And if we have to choose between the sinful world in which we live and the real world of Catholicism and the real world of following Jesus Christ, we don't want that world anymore. And we are offended by various aspects of that world. Like St. Basil points out, during those three and a half years in which Christ performed his miracles, in which he preached the gospel, and the people began to understand it more and more, and more people believed, at the exact same time, more people were frustrated with Christ. He was curing on the Sabbath. He was not getting along with the authorities he didn't seem to be able to get along in Jerusalem, which was the city in which he was supposed to rule as the king and as the Messiah. Why were there difficulties? And when the time came, only one suggestion from Caiaphas on Good Friday morning. Just a suggestion. Give us Barabbas. And all the people were happily said, give us Barabbas. Let his blood be upon us and upon our children. And they all said, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. Just a little suggestion. They were ready for his crucifixion. We must understand in the world today that the Catholic people throughout the entire world are ready for the death of the Catholic Church. It is the Catholic people who do not want the Catholic belief. They don't want the whole of Jesus Christ. They don't want all of his teaching. And that includes many of those that call themselves traditional Catholics. Many of those who go to the Latin Tridentine Mass, who claim to be true followers of Christ, just like the Pharisees were true followers of the law. But in fact, they don't really follow the law. They don't really believe in all the teachings of Christ, and they are against many of those teachings. What is this equal? The world is ready for the condemnation of Christ. The world is ready to completely put him to death. And we participate in that death. What is it that Christ demands? He demands the rule and the authority over all atoms and molecules in the universe. Over every society. Over every element of society. He is the king and the master. And he is God. And we have reached the point of the final condemnation. We find on Good Friday morning... Our Lord Jesus Christ undergone six trials, which can also be divided up into two trials. The religious trial before Annas and Caiaphas, and the civil trial before Herod and Pilate and Herod. And Annas signifies all of the wicked leaders of the church, the false churches. Even though Annas is a Jew, he's not the high priest. He is not the high priest, but he acts like he's the high priest, and he is the false leader. Of all false, representing all false religions. Caiaphas, the true leader, representing the true Pope. And the true leader of God, of the people of God. Both will condemn Christ. And then Herod and Pilate. Both the false and wicked leaders who do not have authority before men. But they claim to have authority. Such as all those that usurp authority at any level of society. Whether it be the guy that claims he's the head of the company when he's not... Or the guy who claims to be the mayor and he's not. Or the guy who claims to be the king and he has usurped the kingship. These are Herod. And then there are the real authorities. The true authorities at all levels of society. And these are Pilate. And we find the characters. For instance in civil society. We notice in our times. Most of the men that are legitimate authorities are likened to Pilate. Who are simply politicians. Who are going to follow the whatever way is going to keep them in power. And whatever way is going to be the most convenient. Or they are like Herod. 
who only is interested in pleasure and who only has his power for the purpose of, of self-gratification alone. These are modern authorities on all levels. On all levels. And then we have Caiaphas and Annas. Annas has conviction and is wicked like all those members of false religions. And Caiaphas is the true head of the church like Pope Francis who is using his papacy and using his authority in order to crucify Christ. All the authorities are enemies of God. We've reached the point where all the authorities are enemies of God and there are no longer any authorities that are his friends, any authorities that are following his law. All of Catholic authority has been taken away from the world, both in the realm of the civil and in the realm of the religious. And the people are not offended. The people are not disturbed. Even if they say officially they're disturbed, it's like the modern Americans. Most Americans say that they're against abortion, so long as it's legal. But if the government changed the law tomorrow and said abortion is illegal, and if you are caught with an abortion, having an abortion, you will be executed, all of a sudden, all those anti-abortion activists... 90% of them would say, oh, that's going too far. They're officially anti-abortion. And yet 60% of those anti-abortion ladies have all had abortions. And so they're officially against abortion. So long as they can secretly sneak off and have an abortion. They're secretly against wicked leaders. So long as they don't close down the bad bars. And the bad movie theaters. They're secretly against all wickedness. So long as they can still walk the streets dressed like prostitutes. They're secretly against all wickedness. So long as they don't have to have all those children. They're against the modern mass. They like the Latin mass. So long as it doesn't make them too extreme. So long as they can space their children. And be normal. And the mother doesn't have to stay at home. She doesn't have to follow the law of God. The father doesn't have to follow the law of God. The children don't have to follow the law of God. But they can look nice. And they can be somewhat moral. And then they can be balanced. These are the souls. Who on Palm Sunday. When Christ is popular. Because he raised Lazarus from the dead. And performed a great miracle. They will say, Hosanna to the son of David. And a few days later, let him be crucified. And which one do they say with more conviction? And which one do they put in practice? Which one do they carry unto the end? The crucifixion. And that is why our Saint, Saint John says in his gospel, And that many people believed in him, but he did not put his trust in men, for he knew what is in the heart of man. And so on this day of Palm Sunday, and on all these days before the crucifixion, so many people believed in him. And we think that we believe in Christ. We really do. We believe in him on the condition that that belief does not make us uncomfortable. On the condition that we have an out. It's like the modern Catholic girls are told by many Catholic priests. Many priests sell them. You know that when you get married, you're stuck with this man until death. And you need to make sure that you raise your children Catholic. And it's okay to be poor, but you better be at home taking care of your children. And then what do they say? But make sure you have a backup plan. Make sure you have a little career. <laughs> make sure you've done a couple of years of college. Make sure you've got a backup plan. Because you're going to stay with your husband until death. But if he turns out to be a jerk, have a backup plan. We have backup plans. You don't come to Jesus Christ with a backup plan. He says, you are either with me or you're against me. Those are the options that Christ gives. And we think that he has different options today. He doesn't have the same options. He does. You're either with me or you're against me. When Martha, St. Martha asked our Lord, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother would not have died. Why weren't you here? Christ gave no explanation. He rather demanded faith. Do you not know, Martha, that whoever believes in me shall not taste death forever? Believest thou this? 
He didn't answer the question. He demanded faith. And Martha said, Yea, Lord, I have believed. And a few minutes later, her brother was risen from the dead. This is what Christ is demanding of us. We are like Martha standing there next to the tomb. And our Lord is asking, Do you believe? Do you accept me totally? Do you accept me completely? The majority of Catholics do not. They do not. That is the reality of our times. Including those that say that they love me. They love our Lord. You say you love me, but your, your lips speak the love of me, but your hearts are far from me. And these are our times. The hearts have been so corrupted that we have become accustomed to thinking ourselves good, even though we are wicked. To thinking of ourselves as pleasing to God, because compared to others, we're pretty good. That's why Bishop Sheen says the newspaper and the TV news is so important. Because what the newspaper does is it shows people that are visibly more wicked than ourselves. And therefore each morning when we rise out of bed and we should be saying, I'm sorry for my sins, I've got to try to do better. We turn on the morning, uh, morning news and the evening news and the afternoon news. And what does it tell us? There are poor people more wicked than us out there. Therefore, I'm pretty good. There's a daily reminder that I'm pretty good. The TV is very important. It helps maintain the thoughts of Satan in our minds and hearts. It helps it. It makes sure that we will not think like a follower of Christ. And remember also, remember also that, that the, uh, at, the, at the time, our Lord, uh, just a few years ago in the 1980s, the, 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 uh, the, the, the Lord Maitreya, said that when my great master comes, he claims to be the, the disciple for the coming of the future Antichrist. He said, when the great master comes, he's going to show himself on your TV sets. And even if your TV is off, it will turn itself on, which was impossible in the 1980s. It will turn itself on, and his face will come to you, and he will interact with each individual. So they interact with one person in one room differently than another, which was also impossible in the 1980s. And he will appear to you on your television sets. Television is very important in the preparation for the Antichrist. It's very important. The souls are being prepared. And we don't mind. If we're good people, we're like Pilate. And we want to delay the trouble. And what does it say in the, in, the, in the creed that we say each day, or each Sunday especially? What do we say? He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. We are most of us like under Pontius Pilate. Uh, we, we, want, we know that in the end, we're going to crucify Christ. But we're going to wait till tomorrow. Let's delay it. And let's try to make ourselves think ourselves good. And we wash our hands of all obligation and of all guilt. That's what we do. So in heading to this, this final trial of our Lord, the final trial of Christ is coming, in which the whole world is finding Christ guilty. Not only part of the world. The entire world is finding Him guilty. And if we are followers of Christ... There will be a persecution. And this persecution is coming. We know that we are in a time very similar to the time just before the Antichrist. It is not precisely that time because Our Lady says that there will come a victory. A victory. Our Lady of La Salette said there will be 25 years of good harvests. After this victory, similar to the time of the Maccabees, 150 years before Christ. Similar to the time of Palm Sunday, a few days before His crucifixion. In which there was a brief glory in which Christ showed his power. Palm Sunday was important because Christ had to show that he could have all the people honor him if he wanted. At whatever moment he wanted. That he was in complete control. And had there not been a Palm Sunday, many would doubt the power of Christ. But he showed his power on Palm Sunday. Only for a brief time. So likewise, he will show his power over Satan 
in our lifetimes. In the very near future, he will show his power over Satan by bringing a victory over Satan. But, on Saturday before Palm Sunday, and on Good Friday, it was the same people. Their hearts were in the same position. They were ready for Christ to die. They were not ready to follow him. And these are the people of our times. That is why conversions in our times... It is like St. Alphonsus says, the conversion of a sick man is sick. The repentance of a sick man is sick, is what St. Alphonsus says. A man is dying. He's on his deathbed. He's been living a wicked life for four, 40 years. Now he says, Father, come and give me absolution. Father, come and anoint me. And the Father comes and gives him absolution. But St. Alphonsus says, but the man is sorry because of his sickness. He is not sorry because of his sin. He is sorry because he suffers in this life. And not because he's going to suffer eternally in the next. He receives the absolution. And he is not forgiven. It is a sacrilege to add to his sins. He receives the anointing. And he is not forgiven. It is a sacrilege to add to his sins. He dies. And they bring his body to the church. And they pour holy water upon his body. But the fires of hell burn it up. So that not one drop touches his flesh. And they say requiem eternam. And every time the requiem is sung. The fires, the devils in hell mock. And not one drop of the requiem. Not one drop of the peace enters into that soul. And they take his body to the, to the graveyard. And they bless the dirt that will hold him. But that dirt is cursed because it is the dirt to receive the damned soul. And all walk away praying for his salvation. And he is lost forever. One of the sermons of St. Alphonsus. About the death of the mediocre man. This is modern man. We are in an age in which the human race is sick. The entire human race is sick. And at this time of sickness, some take a break in order to take a palm in their hands. And for a brief moment to praise Christ and call Him the King. Others take a break to say after a nice sermon, I believe in Him. Like our Lord was believed in after His many nice sermons in the few days before He was crucified. Others take a break and do research on the internet about the miracles of Christ and about the history of the church and they believe in Him like those people believed in Him because they saw with their own eyes the resurrection of Lazarus and many believed because of Christ's preaching and others believed because they saw Lazarus. That's what St. John tells us. We are in this time. But remember the other side of this time. It is a most dangerous time to be a follower of Christ. Because we may think that we are pleasing to Him and we deceive others and we deceive ourselves. We are in a time like that Palm Sunday in which, or the Holy Saturday before Palm Sunday, when the people believe in Christ but they're scandalized Scandalized like Judas, for instance, that alabaster oil, all that oil was spent upon the feet of our Lord. It is one of the signs of damnation. The scandal over money. It was the scandal of Judas. And notice how many, many Catholics, including Catholics that come to the Latin Mass. Why do they come? Many come because they are scandalized at the money that was wasted by the Novus Ordo Church. <laughs> Like our beloved uh, bishop in uh, Bishop uh, in Murphy down there in Long Island, who spent millions and millions of dollars on his new palace, and many are scandalized, and all the spending of money on the various rectories and palaces and whatever for the priests, many are scandalized, and they are scandalized that the people took my hard-earned money. The priest took my hard-earned money, and they used it for something other than my glory. And therefore, they turn away. And they go to God. Because they think God's more responsible with their money. 
And this kind of turning to God makes God angry, not happy. We turn to God because He's better with our money. No, He's not. He wastes it all the time. He is not better with our money. We do not turn to God because of money. Many souls come to God in our times because of the scandal related to money. And this is the scandal of Judas. It is a scandal of those that will become traitors. What is the hallmark of all traitors throughout history? What is the one thing that unites all traitors throughout history? It is the love of money. What is the first condition before you can betray Christ? You have to be able to be bribed. You have to be able to be deceived with money. And our Lord just says in the gospel that the money is the root of all evil. It's the root of all evil. Therefore the modern kings, who are the Jewish bankers, <laughs> the modern kings are putting money into everyone's hands. And telling them that you have all these modern conveniences. And the day will come when we really love these conveniences. So that instead of having one Judas out of twelve. We'll have thirteen Judases out of twelve. That's what's coming. There will be more Judases than there are people to be Judas. Because some will take the job twice. We are entering into an age of Judas. Age of Judas. And it's interesting also, stories of Judases are beginning to abound. Stories of traitors. I remember seeing two examples in recent years. One movie about Benedict Arnold. <laughs> for the History Channel or PBS. Another one about the idiot that uh, Bobby Ford. <laughs> who shot... Uh, we're now watching stories about traitors. Because these traitors, we understand. Because these traitors have the character of modern man. We are in an age of Judases. And the Judas syndrome was begun by the love of money. And the kings are creating Judases. And we are ready to be Judases. And many souls come to Christ because of money. All of these things are preparing the way for the final trial. Judas is in the world. Only instead of 1 in 12, there are at least 12 in 12. Or 11 in 12. The bad kings are in the world. Who are interested only in their own pleasure. Who are interested only in, 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 in development of their own power. In their own personal greed and, and aggrandizement of power. They are, the wicked priests are in the world. Like Caiaphas. And the wicked false priests are in the world. Like Annas. And the world is filled with this wickedness. And those that are followers of Christ are not overly disturbed. We want to be able to go through this wicked world and dodge the really big minds. And just get through and survive. Not cause any trouble. Don't raise, don't rock the boat. Don't cause any difficulties. Just be good. I want to stand for the truth so long as I don't get put in an uncomfortable situation. I want to stand for the truth, but I'll do it secretly and privately in my own heart. I don't want to make waves in the parish. I don't want to make waves in the, in the civil society. I don't want to make waves in the business. I don't want to make waves in the outside world. Because it may cause me to lose my job. It may cause me to lose my position. We must come to understand the fact that we are very close to the time where you will have to decide... Well, we will have to decide, are we going to keep our houses or are we going to keep our faith? Are we going to keep our jobs or are we going to keep our faith? Are we going to keep our status in society or are we going to keep our faith? Those are the decisions that are coming to us. These are the decisions that were given to our fathers before us. And the majority of souls will go along with the wickedness. Those same souls that say today, Hosanna to the Son of David. Indeed, He is the Son of God. We really believe in Him. These will be the same souls who will run after the Antichrist. And who will make sure that the followers of Christ are crucified. This is the world in which we are. 
The only answer to such a world, the only answer is the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is to her that is given the solution to the crisis today. She is the only answer. Because we are at the time of death. Not only our own death, but the death of human society. And we are at the cause of death is the grave onslaught of Satan. In his most serious onslaught that has ever been since the beginning of time. And remember that Leo the Thirteenth, Pope Leo the Thirteenth, saw the vision, the vision that the devil released. The devil released in a special way, more loosed with more power than he ever had before, running for more or less a hundred years, causing the greatest possible havoc throughout the entire world. We are at the end of that hundred years now. Any day it will come to an end. And this is the time of the death. And at the time of death, the soldier in the battlefield always calls for his mother. That is his last call for hope. And so likewise, in this great battle, only those that call on the Blessed Virgin Mary can be saved. Only those that turn to her can be pulled away from the great crisis, can survive through this crisis, can come to the great glory of heaven, and can get through the deceits. Because remember, there are so many deceits in our times, similar to the deceits that will be in the very, very end. Our Lord says these deceits are so powerful that it will deceive, if possible, even the elect. But the days will be shortened. And so just like the days will be shortened at the very, very end, when the Antichrist reigns for three and a half years, so now the days of the hundred years of the reign of Satan since Leo the Thirteenth, this reign must be shortened. And we pray that it be shortened. And that's what we must pray. Let the days of this great crisis be shortened. And when the chastisement comes, and it will come, let us pray that we survive it with the faith of God in our hearts. And that when we weep for our sins, it will not be the weeping of a sick man, which weeping is sick. It will not be weeping because of the sickness. It will be weeping because we're sorry for our sins. And this will not be possible without the love of Mary. The love of Mary is essential at all times, but especially in our times. So in any case, the, uh, we will close it at that. And then uh, the, uh, uh, we'll have now the, an, another uh, uh, rosary. And then uh, I'll go and hear the confessions again. And then uh, another uh, short conference. And then at 2 o'clock will be the Stations of the Cross. So then, uh, so we'll go ahead and close here. Then in the Father and the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen.